Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thanks, everyone, for coming. So I'm going to speak for a very short time, probably about 30 seconds, uh, just to give you a bit of a lay of the land. So when I got elected in, I guess it was late 2014, I promised to look at the traffic, I'll say situation, in both North Lee Side and South Lee Side. Uh, and what I did is I formed two different committees, and members of the South Lee Side Committee are here tonight, so thank you. And the reason I formed the committee, I thought, was really about getting, having people go out to the rest of the community and get people on side. Because to make any changes, there's going to have to be a vote, and, and it's a whole long process. What I didn't realize at the time is how much work was involved. And I'm very, John Gatenakis is the, uh, will be doing the presentation, and, and the rest of the committee is here tonight. But I can guarantee you, collectively, they spent well in excess of 1,000 hours. Um, well in excess. Uh, they actually, and I know our traffic people are here, so just close your ears. They probably know more about traffic in North Lee Side than our own experts. Um, they've done so much work, and whichever way this goes, I do want to extend my thanks to John and the rest of the uh, NLTC, so thank you. So John will be doing the presentation, and there is a, a lot of data, and then we will have, be having questions and answers later. So my purpose, ultimately through this whole process, our office has been involved, but the lead has really been taken, sorry, the lead has been taken by the committee itself. I'm not here to sell you. I'm not, that's not my purpose. My purpose is really to say, here's the plan, or here are the plans that the committee has come up with. Do you like them? Do you believe in them? If not, that's fine. The only thing I will say is that I believe these uh, initiatives come up every 20, 25 years. And so this is probably the last opportunity that certainly North Leaside has to uh, potentially address the traffic issues. 20, 25 years from now, I, not only am I long gone, but the, the, um, the complexion of the neighborhood will have changed. We know all the development that's going in along Eglinton. So I think politically, you will not see uh, any local councillor wanting to take this on because it will be so divisive with people on Eglinton having probably a vested interest in not doing anything and those, pardon me, within the community wanting to take action. So when you have a situation like this, the easiest thing is to do nothing. So this is the opportunity, whether you want to uh, seize it or not, that'll ultimately be up to the community. But thank you very much for coming, and I will uh, hand it over to John. Okay, give me a few seconds here to set off of our Muzak presentation and on to the actual presentation. I will do. Okay. So thank you for coming tonight, and my name is John Gatenakis. As the councillor said, I'm part of a, a group uh, called the North Side Traffic Committee, and we've been working for quite some time to try and find some solutions here. Everybody here has been living in the, in the neighborhood for a long time, and uh, we, we were, we, you'll see some of these results. This is a big presentation. The slides are complicated. The work we've done is complicated. And so what I'm going to do to make it a little easier is I'm going to try and point out the key elements in each slide that you want to take away. The presentation is designed to stand on its own because afterwards we're going to ask you during the Q&A session that will come up afterwards, so save your questions until that part. There will also be a survey to fill out which you can hand in and that will help give us some guidance on your impressions of these ideas. Furthermore, afterwards, this presentation will go up on the counselor's website. You'll be able to review it again afterwards. So the slides are set as standalone slides. That's why I won't read through every word on the slide. Anybody who either hasn't been here or will, in the, or if you want to go review it again, you'll be able to do that. And in addition, access the survey and be able to fill that out if you don't want to use the paper version here or for all the other members because we have about 1,400 households in North Side, and that's roughly about 2,900 voting members. So that's the, the process going forward. The survey is not your vote. It is simply an indication to us. The vote is handled by the city. It's not handled by us. It's not even handled by the council's department. It's handled by the city clerk's office. So don't feel concerned about that, but your indication is very important to us. So with that, I'm going to pull out my little laser pointer and my glasses, and we're off to the races. 
So as the council said, we were formed in 2015 of 14 volunteer residents. And importantly, what you should know is that we were selected by the councilor from different parts of the neighborhood. So we had to identify where we lived. So we now have representatives, for instance, in Donnelly and Brentcliffe. We have representatives that live on Broadway. We have representatives that live on Laird. And then quieter streets like Reichert and Besbro and so on. So you're getting a really nice cross-section cross of local residents who are bringing their views to this process as we attempt to evaluate the problem. As indicated in the survey in 2015, the primary issues that everybody was concerned about were safety, volume, and quality of life. And if we define that a little bit better, we see that safety is really sort of a car, cyclist, pedestrian kind of concept. Volume is really about transient vehicles. It's about cars moving through the cut-through traffic that we all refer to. Quality of life, a little bit more amorphous, but the concept there is, and you, some of you may know this, some of you may not. We, we learned this in the process. There are parts in the neighborhood where people, when they come home from work, can't get into their driveways. Donnelly and Brentcliffe, long line of cars, all caught up, transient volume. They park two blocks away, walk home, come back into, how would you like to do that in minus 40 degree weather? These are real issues. They may not affect everybody, but we need to take that into account when we come up with ideas. Um, sorry, this is moving ahead on me. Um, at, we're not the only people that make the decision. So, so we have a vote, and that carries weight with the transportation department. But the transportation department has significant input on what happens. Other aspects of the community have input. Other city services departments, like fire, police. So don't think this is a slam dunk, even if you love the ideas that are coming here. So what's important in the message that we send to the city is that we are as unified as possible. And we'll discuss that a little further because there are several options out here. And the reality is we want to end up with, in an ideal world, one plan, one set of people that are buying into that plan, even if it's not perfect for you, so that we can send the message to the community that we need this solved. You'll understand why this is so important in the future. Importantly right now, the counselor has support for these plans. And that's a big part because a future counselor may not. Now, his support is conditional upon our desire to push it forward. That's back to the vote. We've tried this before as a community, a lot. This is as early as 1972 that we tried, and that was led by Carol Fripp of the LPOA. And the LPOA has been highly involved in the prior methods, and this stuff is a lot of work. It's a lot of volunteer time. It's a lot of personal time. This doesn't come easy. Please don't treat it lightly. Things that have happened when we tried before these things got blown up. They didn't pass because of issues. Funding was an issue. Whoop. Funding was an issue on a lot of them. Complexity was an issue. People didn't understand what was being proposed. In 2002, you may remember five options came up, and no one knew which one to pick, and everybody was confused what they really meant. And when it came time to evaluate it, guess what? We didn't have that consolidation and unity as a community. That's problematic. There were other things that took down plans. By and large, where we just don't want to have this plan taken down. The red line is hand-drawn, but it kind of represents what traffic, how traffic has increased throughout the neighborhood over that period of time. The other thing that's consistent, and we went back and researched all of this, and it's all in the Leaside 100 room at the library, um, and also on, 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 on city websites. Um, and, and one of the things that is, that is uh, uh, consistent about all of this is each one of these attempts warned everybody, traffic's going to get worse traffic's going to get worse, traffic's going to get worse, and it did. So we're trying to keep it simple, keep it cheap, but make sure that what we propose, and you'll see that coming up, is going to be effective. So let's start off with the survey, 2015. You all, you all answered, and that's wonderful. We have about 3,000, just under 3,000 voting members, 1,000 responses. In the world of surveys, that's cover off the ball, out of the park kind of stuff. So 99% of you said, yeah. Uh, so 99% uh, of you said, yeah, traffic's a problem. Do you see it is an issue? 91% of you agreed that safety was a problem. 95% of you agreed that volume was a problem. What's interesting there is actually volume exceeded safety in terms of overall concerns. And then 84% of you agreed that, that quality of life was an issue. And half of that, we believe, is as much, is as much a definitional element. What do you mean by quality of life? In terms of driver behavior, did it get worse? Are people, is it bothering you that speed, people are disobeying speed limits, stop signs, and turn restrictions? Well, yeah, that's not surprising because it happens all over the place and it drives everybody crazy. LR tree construction is causing additional challenges. Do you think that 
things are going to be better or worse after the construction is done. Well, pretty much everybody is unified that they think things are going to continue to be worse. LRT construction is going till 2021. Uh, Eglinton Connects is calling for intensification in focus areas. And all of you know, we have two focus areas here. So we got a lot of new residents. That's what the council was referring to earlier. It's going to become the new normal. If anybody, if any of you have ever been to a, um, uh, a, a, a council Matlock committee meeting, people scream construction is, has been part of our lives for 10 years and they got 10 more of it coming easy. That's coming here. So, um, what do you think the impact is? Do you believe residential development is going to increase traffic? It's a slam dunk. Yes, it is, and all of us agree. Do you believe that commercial and retail development that's going to come as a result of that is going to increase traffic? Yeah. Do you think out of area transit traffic is a problem? Yeah. So the final question in the survey was, what do you want us to do about it? And similarly, reduce traffic and improve safety and improve quality of life were big, big. So that's a mandate. That was passed on to the councillor. said, this is what everybody's saying. That also drove how we look at the problem. You all, in, 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 we had about 350 written responses out of 1,000. And we went through to evaluate those. That's not easy. <laughs> 350 written responses. Some of us did an awful lot of work on that front. Again, volume rose to the top. Interestingly, so 51%. 10% were complaints about noise or mentioned noise. Safety concerns. A third of them said, we have to snatch people out of the road. My kid almost got hit. Right? Um, term restriction violations, speeding violations, lots of things to complain about. This is a word slide, like you saw in the earlier MUSAC presentation. We took out the word stop neighborhood traffic because they were mentioned so many times, and we left the rest of this. So what this is is a computer-generated slide that looks at how many, it looks at all the words that were represented. The more times a word was said in the written comment, the larger the word. So this is a way of looking at what you all said and then giving you a conclusion or, or some early indications of what people are complaining about. I look at this and I see cut through, I see safety, I see children, I see concern, I see, and you can keep looking, right? Enforcement, dangerous. There's a pretty clear message that everybody was sending. So you're all right. Since 1999, there's been four traffic-related fat fatalities in this neighborhood. That's across all of the neighborhood now, not North Lee side. Um, and, and three of them have been in the last few years. So we worry about pedestrian and cyclists, and so did you. And we saw these kind of campaigns come out. So let's look at the condition. We've done something here in this committee that has not been done in all of those prior years. We bugged transportation and got every single report of everything they've ever done on North Lee Side. So we couldn't control how much we got, but we took whatever we could get. What you see here is pedestrian counts. How many people are walking at any intersection? So they put a human being here for the period of eight hours that counts. And they count traffic as well. So we took the pedestrian portion out. So what this tells you is Don Lee at Sutherland in an eight-hour period, 1,900 people were on the road. I bet you didn't think we had that many pedestrians on our sidewalks. These are things to consider when we're talking about safety issues. Let me take a minute to describe this slide because we're going to use this, this image throughout the presentation. So this is Bayview. This is Eglinton. This is North Lee School. This is a city bike path that heads into uh, uh, the, the Don, uh, or into Sunnybrook. Um, and this school zone is drawn by us. It is not an official school zone. It was meant to reflect where w what we know as community members has density of, of person traffic, children being walked to school, playing in the yard after school, all those kinds of things. Plus, and a lot of children and people walk over to the shops that are on this side at lunch, okay? The reason why there are so many data points along Eglinton is this is actually part of a separate study as parts of this are part of a separate study that was done by the city to advise on the LRT. And, and these are people getting off of basically TTC buses and they're walking north, many of them, to the institutions that are up north. So, so that is, uh, uh, we think that's important. Another big piece of this is you should think about the future condition. So, we're going to have a Laird LRT stop and a Bayview uh, Lee side stop for the LRT. 
people aren't going to be getting off buses here anymore. They're going to be commuting from these stops into the neighborhood, and all community members that are going to be taking it are, are, are going to do the, the, the reverse. So what you're going to see is foot traffic spending more time on any one individual road. So that increases the risk of pedestrians in the future. That's a future condition that we're concerned about. Next point, excuse me for a second. Battery on the, the battery on the laser pointer is running out, but I like to be prepared. So um, this is cyclist. So same chart that you're going to see throughout the presentation, and same kind of same kind of numbers. What you're going to see on Sutherland there, if you remember where I pointed out Sutherland, is that all those cyclists that are on Sutherland are the kids going in and out of the school, right? So pretty dangerous road for for from the perspective of. Ignore that. Child, child safety. Thank you. So what are the actual accidents? Well, this chart took six months to negotiate just to get the raw data. And there's a 1,500 line spreadsheet underneath it that doesn't just deal with North Side, but we did all of Side in the process. What it shows, every box represents an accident that happened in our neighborhood from 2005 to 2015. The yellow boxes are vehicular accidents, car hitting car. Red boxes are pedestrian accidents, car hitting person. And the blue boxes are cyclist accidents, car hitting bike. The number in the box is the year in which it happened. This is a pretty large number of accidents to happen over an 11 year period, okay? There's the totals. So this is the internal of Lee Side. I threw up south, because you could see it's equally a problem in south Lee Side. This number here includes the arterial roads. And as you can imagine, arterial roads have far more accidents, right? So we, we separated the concept of looking at the internals of the neighborhood versus the arterial Eglinton and Bayview and Laird is considered an arterial road and so on. In 1987, a landmark study was done in the United Kingdom that, that basically measured the, how people survive the impact of a vehicle. Don't ask me how they did it, but it's referenced all over the world. It's referenced in Australian studies. It's referenced in US studies, et cetera. We converted it from, from miles to kilometers per hour, which is why you've got, instead of round numbers, strange numbers here. And this is the one we want to point you to, 48 kilometers an hour. Well, at 48, let's bump it up to 50, and let's get rid of that little five. So let's call it 50, 50 at 50. If you get hit by a car at 50 kilometers an hour, you have a 50% chance of dying and a 50% chance of being injured. You have no chance of walking away without being injured. We want to save that as a parameter that we're going to use to evaluate in the next slide. So, since 2001, there have been 52 speed and, and traffic counts done in North Lee Side. That's where they layer those two black tubes that I'm sure you've all driven over. And those tubes, as you drive over them over the course of a 24-hour period, measure the car, counts the car, the time of day it passed, and the speed at which it passed. It does it in both directions. Each arrow represents a study. The num so, and the, not all the studies were done on the same day. This is a compilation of 52 studies done over time, best we can do, right? Each number in the box represents how many vehicles were going over 50 kilometers an hour, 50, 50 at 50. So when the things that, are, that we want to point out to you, because they're, they're, they're beyond just a lot of people driving too fast in the neighborhood, there are other things that you want to consider here. And it's not necessarily just looking at your own road, but looking at the, the, at, at the community as a whole. One, you see some numbers with triple digits. We went and looked at those roads, and we noticed that many of those road segments, if not all of them, I don't remember now, have a no parking on one side of the road. See, as soon as you free up parking, cars can bash through. When people park on both sides of the road, the, the, there isn't enough room for two cars to pass each other without one slowing down and letting one through and the other one pass. I want to highlight this because there were a lot of parking comments in the survey. And people say, oh, get rid of the parking, allow traffic to pass through quicker, there'll be no problem. Well. But there's a trade-off with that, which is it will probably result in potentially increased speed, as you can see in places where they do this. Furthermore, and we're going to point out this in a future slide, getting them through the neighborhood quicker is not the issue. It's when they get to the entry and exit points of the neighborhood that's the issue. Hold for that. This slide here, 
The orange ones, same set of studies. That's over, 70, it's over 60 kilometers an hour. And the red ones were tagged at over 80. Sorry, over, over 70. Now, that's not a lot. And there is some, to be fair, there is some standard deviation, some small error rate in those measurements. So the individual onesies, twosies, I wouldn't pay a lot of attention to. But the ones where the numbers are a little bit larger, I think it deserves some thought. And we've put that, in, that thought in. The point of that is, what we're trying to tell everybody is, we do have a safety issue in this neighborhood, and it shouldn't be a surprise. This is the most complicated slide in the, in, in, in the entire presentation. I apologize. Let me walk you through it. An origin destination study is when the traffic department will place individuals at each entry and exit point of North Lee Side. So at Brentcliff and Eglinton, at Don Avon and Eglinton, at Laird and Eglinton, and so on. There are 11 entry exit points. And those people will be there for eight hours and they will record every vehicle that goes through, take the license plate and the time at which they went through. At the end of the day, when they compile all that data, if a vehicle has entered and exited the neighborhood within 10 minutes, it's deemed transient. It's deemed that it didn't have a reason to be in the neighborhood except to pass through it. That's the 10 minute part, right? Now those are expensive to do. We couldn't commission one of those. So, but then we quickly realized that looking at the data, wait a minute, North Lee Side hasn't changed in the last, since 1996. We haven't built any new high rises inside the interior of the neighborhood. It's all single family dwellings. Yeah, some bungalows have become two stories. But generally speaking, same number of residents live in the area, so that 1996 study has some value for us. What it said in 1996 was 2,550 cars passed through the neighborhood. 1,500 of them were local. In other words, they took longer than 10 minutes in that in and outbound piece. So the local volume doesn't change. We bumped it up a tiny little bit. You can see it looks because maybe we're all a little bit richer than 1996. More kids have cars, so on and so forth. So we bumped it through and kept it somewhere in that 1500 range. Here's the volume part of the equation that should blow your mind. So because we don't have an OD study and we couldn't position everybody at every entry and exit, we used those little tube studies, right? And there was one done in 2005, 11, 12, and 15. Actually, 15 was a, was a, was a person count by Metrolinx. You'll see that later. And in that tube study in 2005, it showed that there was roughly 2,700 cars. However, because we didn't put tubes at every entry and exit point, we didn't have that. This is just Broadway at Brentcliff. Let, let me cover that again. We're covering one road segment in this bar, erroneously comparing it to this one, which covers the whole neighborhood. This is one road segment, just Broadway. So obviously, if we add it on top of that, all the other entry exit points, this bar is going to be much higher. We don't have the data. That's the error built into the slide. This is where you use your imagination. <laughs> Okay, in 2011, one entry point, Broadway and Besbro. In 2012, remember the little red line I hand dried on the, the slides a little further back? That's what this is talking about, one. So add on all the other entry exit points, 5,700 cars at that one entry point. We have a true transient problem. Our local volume hasn't changed. Is everybody happy with that? Okay. Quality of life. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I've already covered the fact that people can't get in and out of their, out of their driveways. The other parts are noise pollution, which we've talked about briefly. And by the way, there is an air pollution component. Kids with asthma, people with children with asthma will definitely be able to speak to that. You start putting the kind of traffic that you have inside the neighborhood and it gets trapped. So our roads. Before, and the rest of these are after. So southbound Q on Brentcliff. This is Brentcliff and Eglinton looking north. This is Broadway and Besbro facing east. We didn't have to work hard to get these photos, by the way. Um, so this is facing east. That, that, to me, looks like a major city center road, not the center of a neighborhood. Um, a little bit of you know, junk going on. Rumsey facing southward at Eglinton. Glenvale build up, and it can get worse than that. And this is facing eastward on Brentcliff towards, sorry, on Don Leaf towards Brentcliff. This is like, you know, how do you get into your driveway here if you're coming home? So let's spend a minute and talk about what happens with traffic. I'm going to speed up a little bit here. In that 2014 study, 
where the, trans the Transportation Services Department did this work for the LRT, and we're going to get to some reasons why they did it, but here's what they discovered. Basically, everybody shoots up to Eglinton from the south, and then Eglinton acts as a splitter where people are heading off in all sorts of directions. However, we have a little problem here. We live here. This is the employment lands, and this is the residential part of Leaside. That's Eglinton right there. And these are our ravines. Ignore everything else on the chart. We're, we don't have a graphics department here. We've got to beg, borrow, and steal from whatever we can get. What we care about is these green parts. This is our ravine, right? This is around Thorncliffe. And that's our choke point at Brencliffe. And there's another choke point down here around the Leaside Bridge at Millwood. So we act as a funnel for all traffic that wants to make its way east and then west it comes through, but if it gets caught up, it'll choose to jump into the neighborhoods. Those are the two choke, point, choke points I was talking about. Come up from the DVP, split across the neighborhood, jump through, or through Millwood. So in that same study, uh, they looked at both a 2014 view of Eglinton and a 2031 future condition view of Eglinton. The blue bar represents a mid-block. So between Bayview and Laird, between Laird and Brencliffe, how many cars headed east and west? The dotted line represents capacity estimates. What is the capacity of the road? By, 2013, by 2031, it's shown to blow through or come very close to those levels. This study did not account for the intensification. So you decide what you think is going to happen to these numbers. Remember I said earlier, passing, let's, let's grease the wheels and let the traffic move through North Lee side faster. Well, what happens when it gets to our intersections is our intersections are clogged up. You saw an earlier slide there of a TTC bus in front of Rumsey headed southward, <laughs> blocking the intersection. So this is a level of service analysis, again done by the Transportation Department in 2014, showing that Bayview, Laird, and Brencliffe are at, at failing grades, so undesirable, very undesirable, un unacceptable. This is based on how long you have to wait to get through the intersection, okay? And the future condition projection is F. We would argue that those are all already at Fs, all the way through. So it doesn't matter if you move the traffic through the neighborhood quicker, it gets caught at the intersection. So it still backs up 